an NHL insider gives a huge update on the Thatcher Demko injury, including a possible timeline on when he will return, and the Vancouver Canucks make multiple roster moves heading into the game against the Anaheim Ducks. We're going to break all this down and more later on this episode. Before we start, I just want to give a huge shout out to everyone subscribed. And if you're a part of the almost 73% that isn't subscribed and you're enjoying the content, make sure to go down and hit that subscribe button. It's completely free and you can keep up to date on everything to do with the Canucks. With that, let's just hop straight into it, Griffin. We do get a huge report out of Darren Drager talking about Thatcher Demko. I'm not going to read through this whole tweet, so if you wanted to just pause it and look at it. This is from Tyson Cole of the Canucks Army quoting Darren Drager. He says he's been through his goalie workouts and he has been skating and he's recently been taking shots, but he hasn't practiced with the full group, Drager explained. The hope is that Thatcher will return to full team practice this week, which is quite huge, just seeing this week instead of the next couple of months. Then after that, you'll start looking at the countdown and we'll take several days at a talk in week to week category. One thing we know is that it's pretty much evident that the Vancouver Canucks are not feeling pushed with Thatcher Demko. Now, Griffin, looking at this, looking at the team without Thatcher Demko, do you think getting them back sooner rather than later is going to be big for the Canucks? Or do you think with Thatcher being out, do you think they can kind of get away with Kevin Lankinen and she loves as goalies and they shouldn't really give them this kind of timeline of, hey, we need you back in this certain amount of time? Well, first starters, I think it's great to hear that he is going to be back sooner than we think. Like you said, a couple uh, weeks rather than a couple months is definitely a lot better than what we were hearing. So I think that's really good for, Th for Thatcher Demko for sure. But I do think you roll with Kevin Lankin right now. He has been playing really well. He's really kind of stolen that starting job from Archer Shilovs after we thought that it was his for the taking heading into this season. But Lankin has played really well. He's played really solid. So if Vancouver can keep doing that, make sure that Thatcher Demko isn't just at 100%, but at 110%. I think we're early enough in the season where we don't need him rushing back right away. I know it has been the greatest start that we've been hoping for, especially with this team what they're capable of but I think over these road games we're going to start to see them kind of get it together a bit more head back home get some more wins and I think by the time Thatcher Demko is back we're not going to be at the position we were to start the year last year but I think it puts us in a better spot to finish this season better than we did last season and the biggest thing is with Demko yes not having them is going to be a reason why the Canucks might not win as many games as they should coming out of the gates if you look at that for Demko's stats, you can pause it, you can read through it, but he was a Vesna Canada just last season. But Darren Drager does continue on to say, and once again, this is from Tyson Cole of Canucks Army, shout out to him for writing this article. He said, because of the patience the club has shown and the fact they haven't had to force him back into the mix, he's taken advantage of this time away, I would say for Demko in terms of game action, is inside three weeks. But that timeline is probably going to uh, either be shortened, I don't think it will be lengthened, depending on how he feels after a couple of practices. So the biggest thing with this Canucks fans, and for me and Griffin being fans as well, seeing the words three weeks, obviously this might not be the case, and it could still be a month out. But with Darren Drager saying he's starting to take shots, this week he looks like he'll be joining the team for full practices. This is going to be huge for the Canucks team and getting Thatcher back at full health. Instead of having to rush him in if Lankinen came out and kind of struggled out of the gates, would have been a different story, but it seems like they're doing their due diligence. They're letting Thatcher get healthy, work with this group, finally get back into game shape. And that's a shout out to a guy like Kevin Lankin and that has a 919 save percentage. Now, the biggest question with this, Griffin, obviously Lankin is playing well, but with Shelov's kind of struggling, do you think he's absurd bound once Thatcher comes back? That could be quite the case. I think it would be interesting to look at that. I know he would be that emergency third goalie should something happen to Thatcher or Lankinen. But I think it is almost in a spot where maybe she loves does go down there for a few games. Maybe once Thatcher comes back, Lankinen does have that backup spot solidified. He has a better record. He has better stats. You see there where the numbers just speak for itself and numbers don't lie. She loves has really shown that once teams got some tape on him after last postseason, they knew what they could exploit, particularly shots through traffic and from a distance. So if Shilovs goes back down to the HL knowing he has to refine that without having to face NHL shots, I know he's going to have to eventually when he jumps back up there. But if he goes down there just to refine those tools to make sure that he's ready for that when he comes back into the Vancouver Canucks on the NHL roster, especially if there is an injury down the line, we know that we have a history of goalie injuries. Hopefully that doesn't happen, knock on wood. But... 
it is going to be something that we have to look at and potentially very seriously consider, especially when considering she loves struggles this season. And I mean, looking at the stats, like you said, she loves is coming in with three games played to start the season, two Lincoln and seven. She loves has a seven, nine, seven save percentage. She has two losses, one overtime loss, five GAA goals against average and looking at she loves he has struggled coming out of the gates she loves was a guy that a lot of us including myself had penciled in as the starting goaltender while thatcher demko is out we've seen kevin lankin come in five wins two overtime losses with a 225 goals against average and he also has a 919 save percentage so having she loves kind of struggle getting this footing in absurd might be big but like you said, and you are completely right by saying it, this team is kind of used to having a goaltender go down at some point. I mean, last year in the playoffs, we've seen Thatcher Demko sadly go down in the playoffs. We've seen a guy like Casey DeSmith not be able to play, and then Shilovs came in to steal the starting jobs. It's not within the realm of not a possibility with the Canucks, where we see them run three goalies. Maybe this is where we see a guy like Lankin and really take over the starting role. Maybe they get a guy like Shilovs in every once in a while, but Thatcher Demko, no matter what happens, is going to come in as the team's number one goalie. When he returns, I mean, we're looking at the numbers. Lankinen's going to be the backup goaltender. Thatcher Demko is going to be the starter. And a guy like Shilovs is on a two-year deal. So Canucks fans, don't be worried that maybe he wants out and he won't resign with his team because they do have him locked up. But overall, looking at this, what's your guys' thoughts on just what Darren Drager was talking about on how he's going to get into practice within the next week on how there looks like a timeline of three weeks before we see Thatcher Demko back on the ice playing games for the Vancouver Canucks? Let us know down in the comments. But with that, let's hop straight into the second topic today, Griffin. And that is talking about the Canucks making multiple roster moves. We've seen from the Canucks PR on Twitter say, General manager, uh, manager Patrick Alvin announced today that Archie Baines has been assigned to Abbotsford and Ratu has been recalled. Now, if you were looking at anything on social media, you've seen Tockett kind of hint with this. We've seen the lines going into the practice before the game today, and you've seen Archie Baines on the fourth line center. This was a placeholder spot for a guy like Ratu to be called up. Griffin, seeing how well Ratu has been in the AHL, do you think it was just a matter of time before he came up? Or do you think he kind of wants to send Baines down to get more ice time, to get more reps, even though he was top six with the Canucks this year? I think it's a bit of both, but I think it's more so that it's just mouths to feed in the AHL system where we want to give guys a fair shake and give them their fair chances, opportunities. Baines has played very well so far in his NHL appearances. But again, we don't want to use him too much. We still want to have him in Abbotsford so we can refine those things, like you said. So that is still a wise choice. And it was going to be expected that this was going to be a revolving door of AHL players getting sent down, being recalled, all of those things because Vancouver just wants to see what these guys are made of. You don't just want to roll with R.C. Baines for the entire season and not see what Atu Ratu's made of or see what Jonathan Lekkeramaki's made of or some of these other guys. You still want to give those guys an opportunity and to give some of these guys a rest. They're not entirely used to the NHL pace, so Baines might need a bit of a breather, might need a bit of a rest to just head down to Abbotsford, just work on some things that he knows he needs to work on, especially when he was on that fourth line in practice. So it shows that he's jumping down a little bit. So now Ratu has a chance to jump in there and see what he's made of and hopefully maybe potentially steal that spot from Baines or just prove that he is worthy of just being on this roster permanently, and then Baines just comes in later on. Because another biggest thing, Taka was kind of talking about how they had not a lot of depth at center at the moment, so they wanted to bring a guy like Ratu in to play center on it seems like the fourth line, as I said, Baines was in here in this picture as a placeholder for Ratu before he was called up. And this really sparked once Pew Suter had such a good game playing alongside Elias Pedersen and Connor Garland. So it seems like Suter is set to play with Pedersen and Garland again. And it seems like Ratu is going to come in and get a second chance this season to make an impression on this Canucks team. What are you guys' thoughts on everything that we're talking about? What's your thoughts on Thatcher Demko's timeline? What's your thoughts on Ratu getting back up and Baines being sent back down? Would you wish it was another prospect or do you think Ratu is the right choice? But we'll hop straight into the comments today. And the comments today comes from three people, actually. When I did my last video, I did say, let me know down in the comments where you're watching from. You can see people from Stockholm, Sweden, Japan, Sweden. It's awesome to see you guys leaving comments on where you're from. So if you want to go down and leave a comment, and just give a shout out where you're watching from, your favorite Canucks memory, how you became a Canucks fan, anything in between. We love reading through it, and you could be comment of the day. Way down there, leave a like, subscribe, share this with your friends. We'll be back with another episode, so keep your eyes out for that. But I've been your host, Mark, with my co-host, Griffin. Take care.